come into Chicago and, 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 you know, this is where kind of, this is where we're really kind of interested in your opinion on this stuff. I do have the probables and everyone knows those are subject to change, but the Cubs get a day off. I don't know. Do you guys get a day off tomorrow too? Yep. Okay. So day off on Monday. So Tuesday we, we roll around here and we get 640 start here. Justin Steele, he for us is 3-0 and with a 144 ERA. Didn't have his greatest game last game, but this guy's one of those, like we, we kind of comp him. I know it's not fair to John Lester, just a bulldog that even when he doesn't have his best stuff, he somehow finds a way. And then for you guys on the bump is going to be Blake Snell. He's 0-3 with a 6 ERA. But when I look at kind of the game logs that he has, I mean, he hasn't been abs- horrible, you know what I mean, compared to what the numbers look like. Yeah, his last outing wasn't that bad, but the outings before that, it's just normal first half Blake Snell. And it's frustrating, but it's kind of just something that Padres fans have to live with. Um, Going into the first half of the season, we thought, or at least I had the hope that maybe this, the second half Blake Snell, which is like one of the best pitchers in baseball, maybe that'll be like the full year this season because he is in his walk year. Um, he, according to himself and Bob Melvin, like he was preparing better. He was like ready going into spring training, going into this season more than he had in the first couple years with the Padres. So that was encouraging. But then, you know, first few outings, it's or first couple outings, whatever it was, a lot of walks, you know, 70 pitches through three innings, you know, just typical Lake Snell, nibbling a little bit, inconsistency blaming some things like pitch calm and saying it's terrible and you know you gave up a bomb to Pete Alonso in New York just on a fastball right down the middle like it's just it's frustrating but kind of just waiting for him to turn it around in the second half or maybe turn it around a little bit earlier this year uh, but I think the Cubs probably have caught him at the right time okay well that takes us to game two Drew Smiley, I don't know if you got to see this. I was at the game. It was amazing. He had a perfect game going into the eighth inning against the Dodgers. You're welcome for that one. Um, But Drew Smiley, you know, his first couple starts were okay, but the last few have been really, really good, and he's starting to kind of look like he looked for us um, when he last year, the second half. We we signed him last year, and, and First half, not so great. And then all, he was injured a lot and just trying to kind of come back. But then the second half, the guy just went went off. And, and so um, right now he's 2-1 and one with a 3-13 RA. But, yeah, it went 7.2 innings against the Dodgers. He gave up one hit, 10 strikeouts. So I think you're catching him at the wrong time. And then Michael Waka is going for you guys, and he is struggling from the last few starts from what looks like giving up a lot of hits against Milwaukee, 11 hits, seven runs in four in, 4.1 innings, and then the last start against Arizona, four innings, 10 hits, five earned runs. Yeah, his fastball hasn't been good, mislocation, especially that Brewers outing, like right out of the gate. It was extra base hit after extra base hit after extra base hit. Um, I just remember – Rowdy Telez hit a ho- couple home runs that game. Um, Yelich, Adamas, Voit. It just, I was at that game and it was over by, you know, the second inning. That That's just how it was. And then last outing, I, I thought it was going to be a little bit better. And then he got knocked around a little bit. I think it was the fourth inning. Could be wrong. Um, but yeah, first couple starts, good. Next couple, rocky. Um, the fastball. He's one of those guys where he has to hit the spot for the fastball to be effective. And just from what I've seen the last couple starts, that just hasn't been the case. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping he can turn it around uh, in this, this Cubs game here, um, this next series. But, yeah, he's one of the, the guys that are you know down right now on the roller coaster of a baseball season. All right, and then you guys face Hayden Wesniski. We've had an injury in the rotation. Jamison Tyone has a groin injury right now, so that would have been it. Would have been usually Justin Steele, and then Tyone would have broke up the lefties. So you're going to be facing two lefties in Steele and Smiley. So usually Tyone would have had that start, but because of the off day and the injuries and all that stuff, it's Steele, then Smiley, and then Hayden Wesniski. And it's been a real big struggle for Hayden. He he came in, we got him last year from the Dodgers in the Scott Efros trade. And the guy all of a sudden when he started, I want to say it was in August, 
Guy was an absolute stud and absolutely closed it out real strong to end the season. Spring training, the guy looks untouchable, probably other than Marcus Stroman, looked like the best pitcher on the team. And then so far this season just hasn't happened. One and one with a 623 ERA, and he got that win against Oakland. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. He's just not going deep. He's, you know, most of his starts are three, maybe four innings, giving up three or four runs, and then the bullpen gets taxed after that. So that has really been a struggle for us, and we're hoping that somehow, you know, when his – it just he's not throwing his cutter a lot, which is surprising. His slider hasn't looked as sharp. So definitely nerves for us. For you guys, you got Seth Lugo 2-1 and one with a 278 ERA. So looks like a good start so far for Seth. Yes, I, I had questions going into the year, maybe not the beginning of the year, but more second half of the year, just as the year goes on. Will Seth Lugo be able to be a starter the whole year? Like he has not been able to be a starter or had that starting experience since like 2018 with the Mets. He's been in the bullpen. So he's not going to be the starter the whole year. Uh, they, they've got to save some innings there. But to start the year, I mean, he's been really good in, in terms of attacking the zone. His first outing, he had, I think, over 20 first pitch strikes of the 25 or so batters that he faced. Uh, he was really, really good in that outing. Uh, the breaking ball, obviously, is fantastic. I've, I've been definitely impressed by him. The velocity continues to be there. And it seems like he has the mindset of, yeah, I'm willing to do whatever I can to help the team. But he, he is fully, his, his mind is fully set on, yeah. I'm going to be a starter. This is what I came here to do, and he's determined to do that, and so far it's looked really good. All right. Well, I mean, you know, let's see what happens. The Cubs are hoping to split the series with the Dodgers. The Dodgers have taken two. The Cubs have taken one. So we're kind of hoping, out. you know, like I said, four-game series, you look at splits, you know, but, but you know, it's hard to win three games out of four. But, uh, you know, and then the Padres come rolling in. We're looking to having some fun out there, and uh, hopefully it's going to be a really good series, Ben. Yeah, I, I think so, too. I'm happy that the, the Padres are missing Mark Stroman. <laughs> um, definitely happy about that. My question here is about old friend Eric Cosmer. How's, how's he doing so far this year? So here's the thing. We, we have a guy in the minors named Matt Mervis, yeah. and Matt Mervis absolutely went through the system last year. He started at high A. And everywhere he went, he crushed home runs. And every time he went up a level, not only did he increase his home runs, he decreased his strikeout rate, which is unusual. Yeah. And so, you know, he had a bad 2021. He was undrafted. It wasn't really as fair because it was like that five-round draft. And so what ends up happening is, is Matt Mervis really this guy that from 2022? Here we are in 2023 in Iowa, and he is still crushing it. Os Hosmer, obviously, you guys are still footing the bill, so we're paying him seven hundred twenty thousand dollars. So the belief is is that we wanted to see the Cubs wanted to see what Mervis would do to start the year. Was that a fluke or was that looking like the real deal? Right now, it's looking like the real deal. So if you're asking most you know Cubs experts right now, the belief was Hosmer was there as just a kind of a comfort blanket to have. You know, Trey Mancini, the Cubs signed, and they signed Hosmer first, but then Trey Mancini. And Trey Mancini was supposed to be the primary first baseman, and then Hosmer was just kind of like kind of, uh, you know, went working on different, um, depending on what was pitching that day, righty or lefty. So the belief is is when they are comfortable and they think that um, Mervis is ready to come up, then Hosmer will just be let go, DFA'd. That, that's the belief. So he's not doing anything spectacular. He's not doing anything horrible. He's, he's, he's fine in the role that he's in. They also wanted him when Matt was in spring training to kind of just kind of work with him and kind of, you know, help him kind of learn the ropes of what it's like to be a major leaguer. And, and so uh, uh, Mervis talked really highly of both Hosmer and Mancini. The Cubs did a lot of getting high character guys. That was one of the big things they do because they do have a really good young farm system, a lot of guys bubbling up. So when you talk about Mancini, when you talk about Hosmer, when you talk about Tyone, when you talk about Sw uh, Dansby Swansby, Swansby, who uh, we acquired in the offseason, not only, you know, th those guys are known for being great clubhouse and great character guys. And hopefully when the young guys come up, these are going to be the guys that really mentor them. So obviously Hosmer would be DFA'd, and then you would hope Mancini would be the one that kind of takes Mervis under his wing and shows him what it takes to be a big leaguer. Yeah, I was, I'm a big fan of Dansby, so I love that move for the Cubs. Definitely love that. I, I would have been fine with the Padres getting Dansby. 
but I, I obviously love Xander Bogart.